I'm, I'm really excited. This is my first uh, coming to the Leo world. Um, unfortunately, Tori couldn't make it this year, but um, I'll, I'll try to replace him. I have 60 slides, but most of them have five words or less or none. So uh, hopefully I can get, get through pretty quick. And to bribe you to stay here, pay attention, there will be a quiz at the end. I have five, actually a little bit more, Raspberry Pi threes um, and a bunch of Belgian chocolates uh, to give out. So I'll be quizzing you, so pay, pay attention. Ne next time I'm actually gonna bring uh, Belgian beer too. I think that will be even better. Oh, there's so, going to be in Germany. <laughs> so, uh, good beer here. <laughs> so um, I, was, um, I was asked to talk about getting started with WebRTC. I know a lot of people in here know a lot about WebRTC already. How many people actually are, have already deployed WebRTC? And how many people have at least evaluated it or are looking at deploying it? Right. And how many people know nothing? I don't think anyone's going to admit to it. But um, so uh, a few different audiences here. Um, for the people that don't know anything, I'll, I'll provide a little bit of an intro. But um, this is probably not going to be the best, you know, absolute beginner intro. But I'll, I'll provide some insight where you can start. Uh, for the people that know a little bit, I hope to provide a state of the market at least and give some ideas where what people are, other people are doing, and what's going on with WebRTC. And then for the people who know what they're doing, just uh, correct me when you hear me say something stupid. So, uh, and a little bit about me, um, a little bit of background. Uh, I, I also run, um, you know, I, I um, run a group at, at Voxbone. Um, we focus on non-PSDN products uh, and doing value-added services on top of, of Voxbone. Includes WebRTC um, and, and, and some other CPaaS items. A lot of people might know me or might have heard of WebRTC Hacks. Uh, it was a blog I started uh, several years ago with a couple colleagues. Uh, where we focus on providing you know top quality technical material for developers to help the you know uh, to help the community uh, and maybe somewhat related um, also involved um, with Cranky Geek uh, which is a WebRTC event company it's largely backed by Google uh, we do a couple of events a year and post the videos online I'll, I'll provide some links to that so anyone that wants you know more detail the intro uh, or even getting to you know detailed specifics on how certain companies implement things and uh, certain approaches. Um, there's a lot of great resources there. So what is WebRTC? Um, maybe before I get into that, I think probably most of you have made a WebRTC call, even if you realize it or not. So most of the Google's products um, leverage WebRTC in one form or fashion. And a lot of people don't realize if you use like Google Chromecast, the Google Cast, uh, or Homecast now it's called. I mean, that, that actually uses WebRTC. Um, products like Slack, uh, if you use Slack, um, their uh, messenger service uses uh, WebRTC based on, on Janus. Um, if you use uh, WhatsApp uh, and use the, the web interface to receive a call, that's WebRTC based. Uh, so there's a lot of use cases and there's, there's more all the time. So Amazon's been making a lot of noise this year uh, with their Amazon Connect service, and uh, which is definitely using WebRTC, Chime, which is looks to be WebRTC, Weber, and, and even the new uh, Echo uh, Show that they uh, launched yesterday. I haven't had a chance to confirm 100% for sure, but I'd be very surprised if that wasn't using WebRTC, since Amazon has had WebRTC as part of its stack now for four years. Um, so if, if you haven't used any of the products or services, then you're probably pretty familiar with or at least heard a lot about the um, WebRTC support. Um, and there's been plenty of uh, references and mentions uh, throughout this conference to WebRTC. So just as a real, real quick recap, how did we get here? Well, five years, five and a half, almost six years now, Google um, open sourced a bunch of companies that acquired that included a you know, top notch you know, media engine, some codecs uh, at the same time. They took that technology, they went to the standards bodies and said, you know, hey, we should come up with a new uh, you know, state-of-the-art VoIP standard. Uh, so they went to the W3C, who standardized is, you know, the web, uh, and the IETF, um, and, you know, which is really more the traditional on-the-wire telephony community, right? and formed WebRTC, and that came into three, you know, mostly you know, three major APIs for capturing the stream, um, you know, basically your camera, microphone, even screen capture, right, from, uh, from your device, connectivity, you know, peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, um, and then arbitrary data transmission, 
Uh, and since then, there's some other kind of peripheral APIs that are doing things like uh, statistics, you know, the, the Git stats uh, API that goes on top of that. And bring that all together, um, and this big community formed uh, around it to, to make all this happen. And five years later, what do you get? Um, and, and these are actual Google stats um, that they provided uh, on their five-year anniversary uh, last summer. But you know, more than two billion browsers, Chrome, to you know, close to a thousand companies, you know, five billion WebRTC app downloads. So it's it's been pretty big, right? Um, and if you compare WebRTC to other technologies at the five-year point, like it's it's really crushing it. Um, it obviously is doing very well in terms of users uh, and adoption uh, and being used. And by far, the biggest user out there is Facebook Messenger, right? Um, so there are you know, 400 million monthly active users uh, that they report. I mean, this has only been going really since four years, and really only two years since they really started a more aggressive launch uh, with this technology platform. And they've been adding something like 25 million users um, a, a month uh, at their current rate. So just a ton of usage. So if anyone tells you that, hey, WebRC is not ready, it's not mature enough, like, it's not true. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, F Facebook's on path to be the world's largest communications provider, you know, based on WebRC pretty soon. Right, uh, so then you might say, well, all right, well, well I, I saw this headline the other day, um, you know, 2016, the worldwide market for WebRC was valued at, at 10.71 billion. Um, and I've seen other figures like, well, you know, WebRC is kind of tough. There's not, a lot, not enough people that know this. Like, um, you know, um, on Blog Geek Me, and there's some, did some analysis on uh, LinkedIn. This showed there's only like 12,000 people that have WebRTC listed in their profile. Um, and if you look at the number of WebRTC companies, there's only about 1,000. So uh, I was looking to see, um, wow, it actually comes out pretty good. Um, and if you look, some, look at someone like Tim, who's been involved in like three or four WebRTC companies, like he must be super rich. Right? Um, so, and then you look at Facebook and, and how much revenue do they get off of Messenger? Like, it, it's zero, right? Um, they haven't monetized any of it. So, the, the, the largest provider in the world is not making any money off of WebRTC. In fact, most of the other companies um, that you see using WebRTC don't even try to monetize it directly. Um, at best, they maybe try to monetize it indirectly. But even with Messenger, it's, it's, there's not even indirect monetization yet. Because um, there's, there's no advertising, no money coming into the Messenger platform. All right, so uh, unfortunately, I think um, WebRC is not going to make you rich. Um, it can, but it, it probably won't. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. You actually, you're going to need to do WebRC anyway. And you're going to need to do it for a, a couple of reasons. And one, it, it's a better technology. Um, it's, just, it's just a newer technology. It incorporates a lot of things. I won't have time to go into all these items, but we'll touch on a couple of them, right? But just state-of-the-art, NAT traversal, incorporating ICE, having top quality, open source, audio and video codecs that you don't have to worry about paying royalties for. Um, all the cool things that you've seen out of Jitsi and Janus for enabling real-time you know, multi-party video um, are, are now part of the specs and, and built out um, in there. Mandatory encryption, right? So um, it has a lot of really good things for it. But I think even more important, um, you're going to need to do WebRTC because your users are ex you know, demanding better experiences than just a dial pad, right? And WebRTC is a really good gateway into providing a more, um, more modern, um, more engaging user experience and better applications and better services. So if you haven't started WebRTC, where do you start? Um, and especially for this audience, I'd say, the first place you should go uh, is just go check out some of the code uh, and poke through it. If you don't know JavaScript, I'm pretty sure you could probably learn it pretty quick. Um, even if you don't, it's fairly simple to see what's going on and how WebRC works. So uh, the, you know, the, the Google team maintains an official GitHub repo um, with a, a lot of great samples here. All right, we can just go take a look. If you want to see how it works, it's all there. They've set this up in a way where it's pretty simple to follow along with what's going on, right? Um, again, we won't go into all the details, but you can see here. Um, oh, you won't see. There 
There we go. Well, let me go back. Well, fish will get, you know, um, GitHub repo with a bunch of samples that goes through all the major use cases um, and even some of the more advanced ones here. This is really a great place to start just to see what WebRTC can do and what's out there. Um, and they implement the code in a pretty simple in a way that's fairly simple to follow along uh, and see what's going on. Beyond that, I mean, if you really want to get going, um, probably the easiest way to do is just go to the code lab, um, the official code lab, um, and walk through this. Uh, this will probably take, you know, uh, usually it's about an hour. Um, you know, so it's 34 minutes here. I think it's typically it's a little bit longer than that. And so a lot of really good resources there. And if you don't like to start with code or just have other questions and topics, there's like so many places to go. So obviously I'm partial to my own blog, um, but there's a bunch of other blogs out there. These are just a list of some of the ones that get regular contributions. There are so many others uh, out there uh, also that are really good, um, right? Lots of places to go for code, um, plenty of videos and stuff on YouTube, um, not just from you know, professionally organized groups like some of the things I do, but even just from local meetups uh, that you can find. And of course, there's the, uh, the, the WebRC Discuss forum, or Discuss WebRC forum, you can go to. So um, going from there, uh, one, one area that is often overlooked is you know, WebRC is not truly peer-to-peer. -peer. You, you, need, you need to have a server um, in there, because WebRC uh, uses SDP. And Probably most people in this room like the fact that WebRTC uses SDP because you're comfortable with SDP and you can manipulate it and change it. But there is a very meaningful contingent uh, in the WebRTC community and standards that think SDP is absolutely evil. Um, and, and they don't like it at all. And I think, you know, there's a lot of good reasons for this and you can debate it or whatnot, but that, that group is largely kind of one. Um, it's not going to come to fruition anytime soon, but there's you know, even discussions of limiting the circumstances in which you can munge and edit the SDP before you know, piping it off to, um, to the WebRC API. So the general you know, direction and trend for SDP as part of WebRC is definitely going down. And in its place, you know, the trend going up um, are these uh, objects from what was once kind of a parallel standard, uh, you know, known as ORTC or Object RTC. Um, effectively, a lot of those objects have now been merged and joined in, um, or are being joined in as part of the core WebRC standards. Um, and a lot of this stuff is there already. All right, so you, you don't um, you don't necessarily have to. So traditionally, and I think for this community, it's definitely true for Voxbone. Um, so you know, Tori about three years ago. Um, built you know, Voxbone's WebRTC gateway service using um, JS SIP, um, uh, you know, with Camellio and Asterisk, right? Um, and this is a pretty popular choice to start out because it was very easy and especially for people that knew SIP, uh, very simple to basically just treat the browser like another endpoint. But I, I think, you know, the markets learned over the last several years, um, you know, what's, what's best for a SIP phone is not necessarily, you know, equivalent to what's best inside a browser. Right. Um, you have to deal with the size, just the size of the step stack. Um, there's issues when you know dealing with persistence and battery life usage and all that. Um, and, and this is, becomes especially true uh, when you deal with mobile. Um, and we can spend a lot more detail on it, but you know, essentially, you know, Jonathan Rosenberg, one of the SIP authors, basically he put this out. I and mean, what his his product, Cisco Spark, they don't use SIP in the client for several reasons, right? Um, but you know, effectively, SIP. At the end of the day, it's not, in a lot of, most cases, I'd say, it's not the most effective protocol to use in an end user client, right? And this was just, just his, you know, his three reasons. So the more modern way and the, the approach you see, uh, maybe, you know, maybe is just using JSON, right? Uh, build your own signaling or modify your own signaling to do just what you need to do uh, and, and optimize it. In most cases, in your client, you don't need to be able to if you're just pushing call or hang up, right, you don't need to have a full complex SIP stack to handle every different you know, call transfer, uh, call park type scenario. Right, um, so, but if you use JSON, then you have to figure out what do you do for a server. Um, there's a, a lot of different options out there. If you don't wanna build your own server technology, you can use existing platforms. 
But if you do want to build your own server, it's actually not so bad. Um, so you know, this is an example here. Um, you know, again, this is just, just a Node.js. But um, if you want to actually push all the logic uh, down to your clients to handle uh, signaling, you can implement you know, a signaling server in like 32 lines of code um, here. So it's not necessarily the end of the world um, to implement your own signaling. And it actually can give you a lot of flexibility and, and, and give you a lot of creativity in your options. So running your own signaling server, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different you know, open source projects you can go out there and leverage and use. You can also use an existing signaling service. I'm guessing most people in this room probably prefer not to use other services, but um, the option is always there um, should you want to do that. Another big area uh, and advantage of WebRC you know, comes down to NAT traversal, right? And WebRC includes this thing called interactive, interactive Connectivity Establishment, or ICE, right? Um, and one of the biggest mistakes we see all the time um, is people forget to deploy a turn server, right? Turn is essentially acts as a media relay. Uh, should the connection um, and the ICE you know, peer exchange not be able to happen directly um, between your, your two clients, right? So running your own turret service is actually, it's, it's not too difficult. I mean, there are some factors and things you should consider as you scale it up uh, in dealing with redundancy and minimizing latency. There's a great, uh, there's, you know, there's another list, uh, you know, Coturn, Restun, Num, they're all great uh, open, you know, open source projects. I think Coturn is probably the most popular. If you don't want to do that, though, um, like in the case of Voxbone, um, I, I, in some ways, I, you know, I've done a lot of work on turn servers and software and have it available, but our network actually really runs about two, three percent of our users use turn, so it's really hard to justify going out and deploying a whole turn server network for a relatively small amount of traffic. And so in our case, we, we decided to actually use a, a turn service, um, at least until the point where the, that percentage grows. So um, there are a few, few options out there um, should you want to use a, a commercial turn service too. Downside with using the turn services, I mean, you, you do have to pay. Um, if you're running an audio-only service, it doesn't end up being too bad. If you're running a you know, HD video service, you, you do need to be a little more careful. Um, so that all sounds great, right? Um, I didn't mention anything bad or anything negative. Um, it's not totally true. Um, so let's talk a little bit about browser support. Uh, there's a lot of browsers out there. WebRTC, you know, Chrome, basically um, run fast and break things mentality, you know, always have the latest features. Um, they're generally ahead of the standards or you know, they do their own things and try to get people to unify around the standards around that. Mozilla is really in the, you know, comply with the spec camp. Um, a little bit slower, but probably maybe a little bit easier to, to follow and deal with in most cases. Then you have Microsoft, all right? Microsoft is deprecating Internet Explorer. There's no WebRC natively in Internet Explorer. You can get plugins and there's other ways around it, right? But uh, natively, there's, there's not going to ever be any WebRC in Internet Explorer. Edge, we heard a little bit earlier. Um, you know, Edge is Microsoft's new browser platform that supports ORTC and ORTC specs. They actually did that first. Um, and then they've since put in and formally released uh, WebRC version 1.0. It's kind of a somewhat limited version of WebRTC, but it's, it's there and works for a lot of applications, I'll say, at least. And next, then, we go to Apple. Um, Apple is really the worst when it comes to WebRTC. Like, they're really, it's, it's horrible. Um, and Apple's not, maybe, like, I don't think anyone cares that much. Sorry. So, you know, you just think Safari. Maybe there's not that many users of Safari, but Apple's policies basically make it so you can't use WebRTC. It's, and they make it really hard to use WebRTC in all their devices, right? So if you, it doesn't work on Safari, right? Um, but more importantly, it's not built into their web view, right? And if you want to build a, um, a native iOS application and just leverage the nice you know, JavaScript web code that you have for your browser and put that in your iOS app, you can't because basically you have to use Apple's you know, web view um, with, from WebKit, and WebKit doesn't support WebRTC. And it's even worse. If you're Chrome and you have all this great capability, 
their policies say you have to use their WebKit, right? So Chrome can't even use their own Blink engine, uh, which is a great job we'll ever see on Apple. So on iOS, basically you're stuck building a native application, which um, not necessarily the end of the world, but um, certainly makes it a lot, a lot more difficult than it would be otherwise. So then you have to look, all right, well, you know, how does this you know, map out to my users? Um, and some applications, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe you can tell your users to use Chrome or Firefox. Um, you have one versus the other. In other environments, though, maybe your users tell you what you have to support. And if, if basically they don't support the browser you want, it, it can be tough. Now, there are plugins for Safari. Um, there are tricks and, and ways you can get around some of this, but um, Apple sucks. How? How does, how, does, you know, so, so how does Facebook deal with Apple? Um, so this is actually when, you know, when, when Facebook first started their big launch, uh, their video calling feature. They actually had, it, you know, and this is a view from Safari um, on, on this Mac here. Um, they actually popped up and said, oh, you want to use a video feature? Go get another browser, right? Um, it's very aggressive. So since then, they've kind of toned it back a little bit. They, so they actually hide the feature so the users don't click on something that doesn't work. Um, but if you go to their help, whatnot, they, they basically tell you, use another browser. So if Facebook can get to 400 million users by telling people not to use Apple, I don't think you know, Apple can't be that, great of, uh, that much of an excuse. So should we just forget Apple? Um, well, uh, there, there's a little bit of help, uh, hope. So a Apple's actually had WebRC in development for some time. Of course, Apple being Apple, they'll never tell you exactly when it'll be released. Um, you won't get any timelines. Maybe it'll show up next week. You know, maybe it'll show up um, in their uh, Worldwide Developer Show. Maybe it'll be another year. Um, that's, that's kind of the sucky part. Um, but they've definitely been working on it. They're definitely making progress. Um, it's going to happen. You know, the amount of work that they need to do now, it seems it gets smaller all the time. Uh, and there's a pretty big community that wants them to do this. There's a community that actually built WebRC into WebKit already. Uh, so there's a lot of things that would you know, make this not impossible and probably a, a real term possibility, you know, I'd say certainly in, I, I would hope for within the next year. But then the question is, you know, do they stick it on everywhere uh, for iOS? Do they build it into native web views and only part of Safari? So there's, we'll see how it shows up. Um, but there's definitely progress there. So uh, another topic when it comes to browsers, right? Now, I mentioned how Chrome likes to you know, move fast and break things. They will absolutely break your implementation. So I, I know yesterday, Matt, we talked a little bit about um, the RTCB Mux policy. There's been other stuff. And I, just today or just this week, we had an issue with uh, newer versions of Chrome. Uh, didn't like our, one of our SSL certificates. Um, so we had to go and update that, um, and basically, if it doesn't like your SSL, the page doesn't load, you can't load any um, WebRTC, that can be a real pain, right? So it's important that you test early, test often, and when you see things break, I mean, actually go and fix them. Um, the browser vendors, they, they make this easy for you, relatively easy for you to do, at least to test early, right? So you know, Chrome has a canary and the dev and beta version. And there's essentially a six to eight week period between each version, so you can do the math, right? So if you're, as long as you're testing early, um, you have a pretty good idea if you're gonna have issues and how long you have to fix them, right? And the same is true in Firefox, and the same is even true on, on Edge. So you know, moral of the story, yeah, you, you need to prepare and have your act together and keep your eye out for bugs. It's, it's not an impossible pro you know, problem. It's just a different process usually you have to follow. I had no time to go out and talk about mobile app support, but uh, I did want to emphasize, like, don't forget about native mobile apps. In fact, the majority of the deployments of WebRTC are on native mobile apps. They're not even on the web, right? So, and there's no reason why WebRTC can't be built in and be your VoIP stack for your native mobile app, right? I didn't, uh, if I had more time, a lot more time. This, this is like some of my, uh, I thought through, I was looking at some of my, my checklist for some of the, the gateway upgrade um, project I'm going on right now and wrote down some things. There's a bunch of stuff you need to think about or worry about um, in, in a few different areas. Um, 
it's not impossible. It's not necessarily simple. Um, you're not going to, oh, I guess I'm late for a stand up. Um, you're not going to necessarily get there overnight, um, but the sooner you get started, you know, the, the, the sooner you will get there. And uh, just, I guess, a couple last few comments since I only have uh, a couple minutes left. I mean, I, I've been in real time communications, telephony, basically since I was an intern in college uh, and never left. I, uh, you know, telecom has been around making simple phone calls for 140 years or so um, since Alexander Graham Bell. I mean, I, I certainly don't want to like just be making normal, you know, making phone calls or helping people make just another phone call all the time. And I suspect many people in the room here uh, are of the same mindset. So what really gets me excited about WebRTC is it's such a great bridge and gateway to doing so many other cool things with real-time communications beyond just making one-to-one -one phone calls or ma making phone calls, right? So there's, there's so many pieces um, that you get with real-time communications and the data channel, you know, as you get into virtual reality, um, gaming, robotics. I mean, I, we can, I could spend a lot of time going through this too, but uh, I really encourage you, if you're not doing WebRTC already, you know, if you don't need it for your own you know, professional work environment, I, I suspect you will at some point in the future and get involved um, and, and get started. So that's the end of uh, the presentation. Hopefully everyone took notes. Um, now I'll be asking some questions for Raspberry Pi 3s and Belgian chocolates. I'll, uh, I'll let you choose, um, and then yeah, I, I guess maybe we'll answer, if there's questions too, we can take them in between. So uh, first question, what's your favorite color? <laughs> All right, up front here. Blue, right? Sure. All right, you want Raspberry Pi or? Um, Pi, sure. Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second question, uh, what are the two primary standards bodies for WebRTC? Go over here. The ITF. Yeah. All right. Raspberry Pi or? Uh, Pi is going to go first. All right, yeah. Thank you. All right. How many real-time communication subscribers does Facebook have? Go on. Four million? Uh, <laughs> assuming you want the Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, I actually didn't go into this much, the fourth one, but what are some of the downsides for, uh, for SIP for, for client signaling? Dan, I already, you already have fun stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to call on you. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm not going to make competitive answers on this one. Anyone else? In the base coalition time, yeah, the ice negotiation, you may not need the entire the way SIP does it. We need to set in light and uh, with body, and uh, maybe some new candidates appear, and we have no place to put them. Can you yeah, I, I, yeah, I like all those. Um, I'm not gonna give anything away on that one. <laughs> it's too complex. Uh, what is ORTC? Over on the right, which are object RTC? Can you explain what it is? It's a new standard for all communication. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not really a new. Okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a next generation of RTC. Yeah, so c RTC. C close enough. All right. Um, what does I stand for? You're gonna, raise, you're gonna raise a hand so I see you. Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, look at that, my, my timer's up. All right, I'll uh, give it. And then probably for probably the, the next chocolate. So, yeah. uh, Left. Which Microsoft browser supports WebRTC? That one's easy. Edge. There you go. <laughs> All right, I think so I don't run over. Um, yeah, come find me. Uh, I have a bunch more Belgian chocolates. I might actually have another Raspberry Pi or two in there. If you uh, come up and have an intelligent question or teach me something I didn't know, you'll, you'll get a chocolate. I'll say some chocolate for Alice. Uh, you get one too. <laughs>
to travel from you, Kenya. You got to suck him in for being a nice guy. Yeah, okay, thank you. So next. Ah, by the way, thank you, Chad. Oh, of course. Thank you. <laughs>